About to do some fiberglass work, but I'm gonna show you what I won off Faraway Channel on this Christmas giveaway. This is my first time ever winning something off YouTube, but it's a coffee mug. I appreciate that, Faraway. I'm gonna put this information in the description, also, it should be popping up right now. now let's get to the fiberglass work I'm about to do you can see it was shipped to me let me open it up and I'll show you what I got all right this is what we got we got a dash pad for a box shipping it's going in a Landau coupe it belongs to Stizo he got a YouTube channel called State of Stizo I'm gonna put it down in the description too. It should be popping up. Go ahead and subscribe to them. Check them out. But he sent me this here. He want me to fiberglass it. He ain't gonna. Um, he don't want the dash shiny and gloss. He told me just to fiberglass it and prime it up so he can get it painted because he ain't know what color the paint was actually so I told him to send me uh, a piece of the material he gonna get it wrapped with and let me see how you think he put it he put it up in here this the material he got his door panels wrapped with and I told him I'd try to get it matched up some paint matched up with it and put it kind of flat or matte let me see if I can get that done I'm not sure if I can but if I can I go ahead and paint it he also sent me the speaker grills here it look like it's plastic dip but I'm gonna have to get that dip up off there just so I can paint it so my paint will be able to stick but I don't know how I'm going to get it up off there, up in here. It's going to take me a while. But I'll come up with something. Let me turn it over. It's going to go like that. I'm just going to fiberglass these in place. take care of these cracks but my first step is trying to get this plastic dip up off so I'm gonna go ahead and come up with something get that off then I'll cut you back on what I did I just got me some lacquer thinner put some down in the bucket I'm letting it soak now it's coming off of it I also got a scotch spray I had started rubbing it was it gonna come off but it's coming off you can see let this one just soak some more then I go ahead and put this one in there finally got that plastic dip off 
got it all over my hands now. But our next step is um like this one here go on this side. This one go on this side. But our next step is trying to bevel all these cracks off. We ain't gonna have to fill the cracks up with nothing because we're gonna fiberglass it. So we need to get all these cracks flat because where it's cracked at, it's lifted up on the ends. So we're gonna have to either push them down or get a knife or something or a drum and bevel it off. I think I'm just gonna push them down. Cause we're gonna fiberglass it anyway, so we ain't gotta seal the cracks up. We're gonna put fleece over this here, then fiberglass. Let me take care of that and I'll cut you back on. I pretty much get everything knocked down like I want it. Still a few hot spots, but I should be able to take care of that once I put that fleece on, let it on off. Also did up in here. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this fleece here, like that. We're gonna wrap it. We're gonna glue it down with this spray adhesive. I'm gonna go ahead and cut me I'm gonna cut me a piece of fleece the size of the Dash pad, I'll be good to go. Got me a piece cut. It's kind of too short. But I can make it work because this fleece is real stretchable. Once I put it on. Now what you want to do, you want to kind of even it out. And then you throw half of one side over to the other. Then you just do half and half. You do this side first, then work your way around to this side. So I'm just going to spray some here. And go on and put this end down, then I move on to the next side.
This is dry. I can go ahead and take some of these staples out. The ones that ain't embedded, but the ones embedded, I'm gonna leave them. But like this here, where it went catching the nothing, I might go ahead and take them out. You can see where it lifted up a little bit right here. I might try to put something on top of it. Try to hold it down until it dry. To keep that shape. What you want to do, you want to wait till the top side dry. You want to make sure the resin dry before you start trying to resin the back side. Because you don't want to resin the top side and the back side at the same time. Because that glue will interact with the resin and it will lift up and then you have a big mess. So you want to make sure the dry, where the top is dry, then turn it over and do the back side. You don't need to do all of the backside. I mainly just do a little overlap of the edge so it'll stay in place. Then I might go back and trim the excess, but you really don't have to. The resin dried up now. I also went on and wrapped, I wrapped the speaker grill in aluminum foil, show you on this side, because the resin, it don't stick to aluminum foil, I just did it so I can know where to cut at, so I know exactly where the grill go. I just wrapped it, put it down in place, and I put a can on top of it so it'll stay in place until the resin dry. Now I can go ahead and cut this out and put the speaker grill in place. Because I'm a fiberglass on top of this, I'm a fiberglass it in place. Now what I'm finna do, I'm finna go ahead and take me a box cutter. I'm just gonna cut out around where that little line at. Then I'm gonna put my speaker grill in place. So I can store fiberglass in it on both sides. Now that's all I gotta do is just sit this down in place. I got both openings cut out. What I'm finna do now, I'm finna take my DA. Put some 80 grit sandpaper on it. I'm just gonna knock this down some just so my fiberglass mat will lay flush. Try to keep the air pockets out. But you don't really have to do it, but it'd be a lot easier getting that fiberglass mat to lay flat and flush. I got my speaker grill set in place. I'm finna go ahead and mix up some bundle glass. I'm just gonna fill in the cracks. To make this transition real smooth before I start fiberglassing it. Which you don't have to do it, but I'm doing it. A lot of these steps you could skip, but I like to go the extra mile. So, in the long run, make my sanding a lot easier. Cause once I uh, transition this off real good, the fiberglass will sit flush. You don't have to worry about trying to make this contour. The 
fiberglass filler done dried up. Now I'm finna take the same DA with the 80 grit sandpaper on it. I'm gonna go ahead and knock this down. Got it knocked down. Now I'm finna go ahead and fiberglass the whole piece. What I did, I just tore off some pieces of fiberglass mat. This fiberglass mat here. Got me some resin. Gonna go ahead and put some harden in it. Then I got a chip brush. That's what I'm used to put it on with. Five glass resin done dried. Now what I'm finna do, I'm finna flip it over and get my sander and I'ma sand all these loose fiberglass hairs off. Then I'ma fiberglass from here to where I stopped at. Plus you wanna make sure you get enough fiberglass mat on the other side of where these screw holes at. It's four, two on each one of them. Plus it's also a hole on each side, right there. I'm gonna have to drill it out. Once I strengthen it up, I'm gonna drill it out with my drill bit. But you just wanna make sure you get enough fiberglass mat there so it don't push through. fiberglass mat and resin on the top. I had brought it out in the sun so it'll harden up. It harden up a lot quicker in the sun than it do on the inside. I done brought the dash back in. Everything done dried up. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this down with 80 grit sandpaper on the DA. Got it all sanded down. You can see I still got some low spots. It's the dark areas. 
and pinholes. But I'm finna mix up some Rondo. And Rondo is brushable filler. It's filler you can brush on instead of trying to spread it on. I got a video on how to make it. It should be popping up now. I also put it down in the description. But I'm finna go ahead and mix that up and brush it on. Finished up on the rondo. You want to have some drips around the edges. You can take your brush and hit it again until it start hardening up. Or you can just let it just drip because you can always sand it off at the end once you get, uh, once it dry up. I let the rondo sit overnight. Everything dried up. I also went back and put a little fiberglass filler up in here. I seen some little low spots on the back side. I'm gonna turn it over. You can see where I did the fiberglass filler at. I'm trying to build it up. Then I'm gonna take my sander and sand it down flush. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna take my DA with 80 grit on it. Go ahead and start sanding it. As you can see, I hit it with the 80 grit. I still gotta hit it some more. I just wanted to show you. Well, you can tell all your low spots. The low spots is the dark area. So I need to bring this down some more where it should be. Everything should be dug off by the time I get it brought down. If it don't be dug off, I might gotta go back and put in some filler and bring it up if I take it down too low. You can see the low spots real good now. All the little dark areas, them low spots. I got quite a few over here. But it's coming together now. Low spot, low spot. I'm just gonna mix up some fiberglass, well not fiberglass, but some lightweight filler, Evercoat. I'm just gonna mix some up. I'm gonna use my spreader on this one here. I'm just gonna spread it just on the spots, this low. Same process. I'm gonna go ahead and sign this with 80 grit. Pretty much got to sand it down with the DA, but I'm gonna go back and hit it with a block in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and trim all this out first.
got it cleaned up pretty good. I still got a little bit more shaping to do, but it's pretty much done. I'm finna go ahead and block it now. I'm finna block the surface because I did all this with the DA. I'm gonna use this block here. I got some 180 on it. Got another block I might use. It's a little bit bigger. But I'm gonna start off with this one. Wrapping it up now. What I'm finna do now, I'm finna blow it off. Then I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put two lines up in here. From here to here. And from here to here. This is how the original dash pad made. It's connected. Got like a little groove, two little grooves running from that there. I'm just gonna run some masking tape. Then I'm gonna take my little saw here. I'm just gonna cut some grooves in it. I did it on uh, my first box shipper door panels. I did it on that years back. You can see the lines in it now. What I'm finna do now, I'm finna go ahead and open it up some. I'm just use some sandpaper and I'm gonna fold it in half and just go down in between it and open it up. Just move it on out. Now what I'm finna do, I'm finna go out here and test fit it before I move to my next step. Everything fitted pretty good when I test fitted it. I'm just finna straighten this part here out, up under the dash, along this lip. I'ma kinda even it out so it won't be jagged like that because you can see it if you look up under it. So I'ma go on and straighten it on out. What on to straighten that lip on out. Now what I'm finna do, I'm finna go ahead and drill these holes out. I got four holes to drill out. Just finished blowing it off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shoot my first round of primer.
primer done dried up now. But I'm gonna let it sit overnight. I'm gonna come back out here in the morning and go ahead and sand it down. But I'm gonna go ahead and put some glaze and put it in all my pinholes that I see. You can see them real good now. I'm just gonna use the bundle glaze and put it. You can pick it up from Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. I gotta straighten this land up some. But other than that, it's looking good. Also up in here, I gotta smooth it on out. Glaze and put it in the primer and dry it. This the next day, the following day. I'm finna go ahead and hit this with 180 again. Then I'll be ready to shoot some more prime on it. Then I'll go with my color after that. What I did, once I got through sanding with the 180, I had grabbed some 400 grit wet sand just to get the 180 scratches out because I'm gonna go straight to my um, color. I'm gonna put a texture on it, but I'm gonna go straight to it. I'm not gonna prime it no more because I got it down pretty good. I don't think I need to prime it again because I'm gonna have a texture and it's gonna be a flat finish. So it don't gotta be that smooth. It ain't gonna show no imperfections because it ain't gonna be gloss. But it's down real good. So I think this would be good enough. That's the look I'm going for right here. I did these eight pillar pies for my photo box Chevy four years ago. The video should be popping up now if you want to see how I did them. But it's a texture finish, flat. And how I did it, I just used this here, this truck bed coat. Go ahead and spray this with this here. Then I'll be ready to shoot the color on top of this. I had went on and sprayed the back side of the dash pad with the bed liner coating. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over, then I'm gonna cut it back on and spray the top side.
the finished product. If you want to see the dash installed, you need to go to Steezo channel. Go ahead and subscribe to State of Steezo because I'm going to leave the dash in here for a couple of days before I handle it. I want to go and let it cure up. But I got a lot of updates. I need to do an update on Miss Ruby, the 6.0 cam box Chevy. I need to do that update. Plus, I got some updates on my, my Landau I need to do. Just the holidays and this weather had me behind. But I'm back in the swing of things now. So stay tuned.